Romans built stadiums 2,000 years ago. The Colosseum in Rome held over 50,000 spectators, and various cultures throughout the ages have built stadiums. The birth of the modern stadium came into existence in the early 1960s. A perfect example is the opening of the Houston Astrodome in 1965. A stadium is a fairly large structure seating at least 15,000 spectators, and a grandstand normally seats between 1,000 and 15,000 patrons. In the mid to late 1800s, the main sporting events in America were horse racing, boxing, dog and cockfighting. These events drew large crowds that stood on the ground or on hay wagons staged in a circular formation around the event. The emergence of wooden grandstands occurred after the Civil War, most prominently at fairgrounds where horse racing took place on a regular basis. By the early 1900s, the addition of professional baseball, cycling, and motor car racing had people flocking to outdoor events. Motor car racing in 1911 saw 33 deaths among spectators and over 400 injuries. More people were killed watching the race than driving the cars. More and more wooden grandstands were being built across America, not only to provide for the safety of the spectators, but to enable large crowds to view the events. During the early 1930s, spectator sports were gaining in popularity, especially football. The previous decade saw Newt Rockney, Notre Dame's innovative and inspirational coach, bring national popularity to the college football game. For the young high school athletes, sports now offered a chance to compete for college scholarships. With unemployment at record numbers, many cities took advantage of the Works Progress Administration relief program by expanding their high school athletic programs. The WPA was established in 1935, and by June of 1943, when it was officially terminated, the WPA had employed more than 8.5 million different persons on 1.4 million projects and had spent about $11 billion. During its eight-year history, the WPA built over 2,500 grandstands with a combined seating capacity of 6 million the majority of these grandstands were constructed out of concrete, and many are still in use today. The economy during the 1950s thrived. From the end of World War II up until the 60s, the United States became the richest nation in the world. There was a baby boom which created the development of suburbia, which led to the need for new grandstands, and with the demand at a peak, saw the introduction of steel grandstands with wood planking. This was the birth of pre-engineered grandstand structures. By the mid-1960s, there were over 50 manufacturers of pre-engineered grandstands. The majority were regional. The 60s saw the first space flight, the invention of the automated teller machine, the computer mouse, and AstroTurf. The first aluminum seat board was extruded in the spring of 1968 and used as a replacement for a wood plank on an existing grandstand. By 1970, the industry was building permanent I-beam grandstands with aluminum decking and seats. These grandstands were being promoted as maintenance-free and an alternative to concrete. Wood structures and wooden planked grandstands were now a thing of the past. By 1980, the grandstand industry consisted of less than 20 manufacturers, with eight expanding to a nationwide coverage. 1980 also saw the introduction of two major changes to the industry, a welded decking system and an interlocking decking system. Both systems were developed to compete against pre-stressed concrete grandstands. These systems were extremely popular. They provided a decking system comparable to concrete, requiring less annual maintenance and at an economical price. The next 20 years saw various attempts by the industry to improve their product line to no avail. The industry introduced snap-in decking, anodized colors, painted aluminum and steel, plastic chairs and seats, shot-blasted decks and various railing systems. All these items made little impact. The industry was stuck in the 80s. In 2000, a massive 12-month marketing survey was conducted across the country, interviewing architects and owners to determine how to take the industry forward. The survey produced several improvements, 
including a new decking system based on the 1980 welded and interlocking decking products. This was the first new decking system in over 20 years, and like its predecessors, it's now the first choice for owners and architects. The improvements introduced one-piece platforms, beveled thresholds, no penetration of hardware through the decking, seat upgrades the chairs without changes to the structure, leading edges on the stairs, and all maintenance is now from the top side of the grandstand. The grandstand industry is a $250 million market with four companies controlling 70% of the business. In the future, expect to see more efficient designs, tools for the architect to estimate costs more accurately and reduce time from design to completion.